Hey, what's up, guys? This is Joel Benavides with the Block Squawk Podcast. We're coming at you for the demo episode of Block Squawk, technically speaking. Uh, and uh, with the new format, we're going to be breaking up the podcast into three separate segments, uh, just so it's a little bit easier for me to post uh, online on YouTube. And so that's what we're going to be doing. Eventually, I'll have a green screen back here and stuff like that. But I just wanted to run through the motions. I put out a trading view uh, chart. Uh, a couple of days ago uh, that's the first part of the new format uh, and we'll discuss that here shortly at the end I believe uh, but uh, mainly this uh, this segment's gonna be about about the chart about TA and stuff like that so um, so let me pull pull that up for you guys and uh, where are we the hell am I doing? I'm breaking stuff today, guys. Um, it is the 28th of May. 28th of May, and uh, and we are looking at uh, Bitcoin on the Bitfinex. Uh, we're trading right now at 87.23. That's about 23 bucks up from when we started, uh, and we're still in that consolidation range. I think we may very well may be there. And this is what we call a rectangle here. We'll get into all that here shortly. Uh, let's look at the one hour chart, okay? If I can find it. And uh, and uh, nothing you hear on the on the podcast uh, today is uh, trading advice. Uh, so please be aware of that at the beginning of the stream. You saw that on the on the bottom of the bottom of the screen. Uh, and uh, as always, you guys can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm always I'm always kicking around on Twitter at Joel Benavides. Um, so uh, yeah, basically let's let's look at the chart uh, and uh, and if I can remember everything. Um, we're looking at uh, Bitcoin on the one hour chart. Uh, as I said before, it's the 28th of May at 8.27 p.m. Central Time, 1.27 Universal Time. And uh, basically, we really started this kind of like uh, trending climb uh, back on the 10th of May uh, when we were down in the 6400 area. Um, and so we've had a series of uh, bull flags and bear flags and we're just kind of whipping up and down, breaking uh, previous levels of support and resistance. Um, and right now we're hanging around, uh, one in particular, around 8787. Um, uh, that was set back uh, earlier in the year. Uh, so, uh, so let's get into it. Uh, right now, I believe that we are looking at a bull flag. Um, and um, first, uh, first item on the menu is uh is uh is stop entry and exit points and so we're going to discuss all that right now and by default the ta tool of the day is going to be the trend line uh here on trading view and there's a lot of platforms out there guys that are actually built on trading view you can get other like third party um, uh, TA platforms that have trading view built into it because it is such an excellent platform for this um, so uh, highly recommended of course um, full disclosure I'm not paid by trading view to say that uh, so if you look right here on the top left hand corner of the screen here let me take a look at you guys real quick <clears throat> So if you look right here in the top left hand corner of the screen, uh, we have a little line with two circles at each end. That's a trend line. If you want to use variations of the trend line, you can hit this little arrow to the right of it and it'll open up all these other other trend lines. We have an info line, a trend angle, horizon line, horizon ray, vertical line. I tend to use a horizon line uh, to set my support and resistance levels because uh, it's easy to draw a horizontal line across the entire screen. And then um, in many instances, I will use a ray or an extended uh, to draw a, uh, a, good, a good trend trend channel 
Uh, but we'll get all into all that right now. Right now, we're going to use a trend line uh, to outline this. Now, personally, what I like to do when I'm drawing uh, these things is I try to find uh, the line that's going to give me the most touches because touches offers validity. Uh, and then I... Uh, I connect them at those points where, where you're getting the most touches. Usually I'll have this little magnet activated right here in the center left hand corner of the screen. Uh, and that just kind of lets you hone in on, on these points a little bit better. Some people don't like using it because it's not always accurate. But if you're operating on the same, uh, same time frame all the time, it's relatively accurate. Um, and so that's pretty much it. You just grab and drag and drop these, these points and uh, the most touches give you the most validity. Uh, we have a little pole, uh, and then we started consolidating, just bouncing up and down within this very narrow range, and that's our flag right there. Doesn't look like much of a flag uh, on the one hour, uh, but uh, when you really uh, bring it out into perspective, hit the auto button, you can see it's, it's probably a flag. Now, what I like to do also when I'm doing TA because uh, some traders, especially old school traders, will throw validity at closing prices only. And so if you bring up the line chart, uh, it's, it's, it's plotting closing prices, right? Each, clo each candle uh, uh, start and finishes, or uh, finish is, sorry, I should say finish, is, uh, is plotted as a point on the uh, line chart. And so I will select my trend line tool and then on the tool menu bar, I'll change it from a solid line to a dotted line. Usually keep the same color. And again, with this magnetic feature activated, I look for the two highest points uh, and two lowest points. Uh, usually, if it's uh, if they're uh, parallel, uh, then I'll just drag one over. Sometimes it's easier to find it if in a uh, downward trend you draw resistance first and then drag that line down uh, to the support area. Uh, so let's try that first. Uh, right now I'm gonna pick these two uh, as my highest points and I'm gonna draw a line right there. Uh, and it looks relatively accurate, so I'm gonna uh, extrapolate this, bring it down. Yeah, it's lots and lots of touches right there. Uh, and so from here, I can just hold down the control button on the keyboard uh, with that with that line selected hold down the button the control button on the keyboard and then click and hold That and then just drag it down and it automatically clones it and then from here You can kind of look for some kind of symmetry. Uh, I'm not really catching it So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick those two points that are furthest down and then make my adjustments accordingly and so uh, we can see it's kind of like this um, bullish uh, triangle it's not really like a parallel flag uh, so uh, so that tells me uh, to look at the direction that the uh, equity or crypto or whatever was moving in before that pull broke out right and if we pull out we can see the grander design is bullish right so I am going to posit that we are going to continue in that direction given there is a significant amount of volume when it happens and there isn't any significant levels of uh, resistance above it. Uh, another way to tell, in my opinion, remember this isn't financial advice, another way to tell, in my opinion, if there is some validity to that bullish call is to pull up the uh, candle view again and look at those candles. Um, do we have like kind of wild... Uh, wicks um, or is there uh, are, are, are they tight wicks like right here uh, getting in towards the breakout we had really really tight wicks and so to me that spells confidence and it seems like we may have started out with some kind of crazy wicks but uh, those wicks are tightening but there's some some hammers in there and stuff like that so uh, some uh, bullish engulfing. So I'm, I'm thinking that we are going to break out uh, to the upside. We may not, we may break down to the bottom side, but I see more, um, more wide open space 
to the upside than I do on the downside. Now, now that we uh, are going to posit, or I'm going to posit, uh, that we're gonna move to the upside, I am going to measure this bullish break, right? There's different ways to do that. Uh, if, if you really want, if you need to get the numbers, you can just use the ruler and uh, measure how many bars and, and what kind of growth in percentage and dollars we're talking about. Uh, but the fast way to do it is to just grab another trend line right here. And with that magnetic feature activated, uh, click the opening of that bullish move and, uh, and drag that line up to the closing of the end of it, right? So this kind of gives us uh, distance and slope, right? And uh, usually it will reach that level if you just do this. You place the base of that, um, we'll call it a pole clone at the bottom of the flag. Um, and uh, take a look at it. We're looking at resistance right here. So this is interesting because if I want to extrapolate it out a little bit, I can even make a guess as to when the breakout is going to occur. Um, and on this one hour chart, we may be here. Now this doesn't always work guys. Uh, this is, um, this is um, as one YouTuber that I follow puts it, risky biscuits. Uh, yeah, this is risky biscuits because it could happen right now. You know what I mean? And somebody else uh, might be measuring the breakout from a different point. Um, somebody who's uh, trading a, a high level of volume. So, but I'm going to put leave this here and I'm going to say that on or around uh, the 29th of May at 1300 UTC, we're going to begin a breakout to the upside and uh, we will bounce off of resistance at around, uh, I don't know, either 9400 or uh, 9500, around there. Um, over over the next uh, few hours after that um, so we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes uh, but that's my call um, and that's just um, based off of like different trading educators and what I've personally seen um, in the market but that's the idea behind some of this pattern recognition um, and uh, if you really want to get like a good primer on uh, on what these patterns are where you can find them uh, they're really all over. You just got to find, do your due diligence and find uh, an educator with a history that's verifiable that you can trust. Um, so, and then once you do all that work, once you identify these levels and the trend um, and uh, identify some kind of pattern and candle price action that kind of gives you a hint of where to look, where to enter, where to exit, where to set your risk, obviously your, your, your stop is going to be um, uh, uh, it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna want at least a one to three risk reward ratio uh, with a position size no greater than one to three percent of your risk capital. Um, again, it's risk capital. This is not trading advice, uh, but that's the uh, that's the basic idea here, guys. So um, I guess we have a few hours to wait and see, and uh, I'll be watching. Uh, and I'll be on Twitter throughout the night. Um, so, uh, and then once you do all that stuff, you can come over here and kind of look at these other indicators. And uh, like S Scott Barkley says, he's the famous trader that we're discussing earlier during Block Talk. Um, we allow the indicator to give us information that we can't get any other way. And so we've already uh, gathered information on price action on uh, patterns which are based basically in 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 market maker action and psychology and stuff like that so I mean it could it could go the the other way if we measure from the top of that flag uh, uh, you know I think it probably already would have happened but if it does break out to the downside okay and I'll, I'll add this little caveat on here if it does break out to the downside uh, we are going to uh, be below this level of support, this strong level of support, which is going to cause uh, the uh, intermittent correction or retracement uh, that many people have been calling for. And it may happen. People are getting kind of complacent. Uh, they're not really thinking 
about a move to the downside anymore because we've been in this upward action for so long. And depending on how you look at it, some of these candles are 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 kind of shady looking. So we'll just have to wait and see as always. Uh, but that's where I'm going to be focusing my own attention. And uh, and so, uh, but following up, just to put a period here, um, that uh, MACD has signaled downward and uh, we may be uh, reversing in oversold territory. So I still think maybe we have some some uh, some bullish play. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm leaning like in a 60, 40 kind of way. Um, so I'm looking up here, guys. After we get up here, uh, you know, who knows? We'll have to look at it again. Uh, but that's where I'm going to be looking at, guys. You guys can reach out to me on Twitter uh, and tell me I'm full of shit or whatever. Um, but that's uh, that's going to be it. And we already discussed the trend line as a, the TA tool of the day. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, if you're interested in news, go check out Blog Talk. If you're interested in uh, just a simple explanation as to where price is and what Bitcoin's doing, uh, you can also look at my video snapshot. Uh, again, this was a... Uh, a, uh, a demo of the new format and uh, just to kind of see how I'm how how labor intensive it's gonna be for me to split these things up and get everything going out in in the new format but uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in episodes 51 through 60 starting June 1st uh, if you have any questions comments concerns reach out to me on Twitter. If you want to support the podcast, head on over to anchor.fm forward slash block squawk and hit support this podcast. And, uh, and that's going to do it for us. Uh, time now uh, in San Antonio is 8.42 p.m. UTC time is 1.42 UTC. And, uh, and it's the 28th of May locally. And of course, uh, a couple, uh, almost a couple hours uh, into the day on the 29th on the Universal Clock. And so uh, that's going to do it for us for this demo episode. And we will see you guys back on the 1st of June uh, every day. I don't, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. It's going to be grueling. It really is going to be grueling. Uh, after running through the demo episode and everything, uh, it, it's going to be grueling to do this. I mean, not every day. I like I, It's, it's going to be perfectly possible most of the week uh but there's gonna be a few days during the week that i'm gonna be dragging so i need you guys to be permissive with me uh over the next uh or don't you know whatever uh but um yeah so but i'm looking forward to it either way so we'll see you guys on the first uh cheers and um and thanks for listening and watching peace